Lady Jane Grey was the great-granddaughter of Henry VII and the second cousin of Edward VI. Jane's mother was the daughter of Princess Mary, Henry VIII's younger sister, and was mentioned in her will as the fourth in the line of succession after Edward, Mary, and Elizabeth. Jane was a quiet and studious girl, as well as a fanatical Protestant. When she was only 15, she took part in a sinister plot wheezed by John Dudley. The objective was to put her on the throne after the death of King Edward VI, but it ended tragically for the young girl. The reign lasted only nine days. John Dudley was the regent of King Edward VI. He planned to prevent the throne from being taken by the Catholic Mary Tudor. Dudley was the father-in-law of Lady Jane, married at 12 to his son Guildford, who was the same age. John believed that he could compel his daughter-in-law to fulfill his wishes. After lying to the king, Dudley managed to turn Jane into his successor, sidelining Edward VI's half-sisters Mary and Elizabeth. Edward VI died on July 6, 1553, at the age of 15. Jane grew up on the fringes of the royal family. Her father, Henry Grey, was a courtier in the palace and his family had a large house in London, in addition to a dilapidated country estate. Jane's mother, the Duchess of Suffolk, was the daughter of Mary Tudor, Henry VIII's younger sister. The girl's parents were ambitious, devising a brilliant marriage for their daughter, with King Edward VI among the suitors. To prepare her for it, Jane received a great education. Jane was an outstanding student. From the age of six, she started studying Latin, Greek, French, Spanish, and Italian, as well as calligraphy, dance, and embroidery. What could spoil her parents' plans was the daughter's appearance, as she was small and thin, having a feckled face and sand-colored hair. In her childhood, she was severely punished by her parents. She only found peace after moving to London, living with Catherine Parr, the last wife of Henry VIII. Elizabeth, Henry VIII's daughter, was 13 years old, living with Catherine as well. The two girls became friends. Jane's parents felt that such change was a chance for their daughter to spend more time with the young king. But in reality, Jane and Edward rarely saw each other. When Catherine Parr died in 1548, Jane was only 10, under the wing of Thomas Seymour. He was the brother of Edward Seymour, the king's protective lord, and had plans to take his brother's place. One of his plans was to keep Jane's guard and marry her to Edward VI. But Thomas's plans failed. He ended up arrested in the Tower of London and executed. The girl moved back to her parents, committing her lift to study and excelling in several areas. Her life would change again when in 1553, as a pawn in the intriguing plots of the Tudor era. In January 1553, Edward VI was dying, while Dudley was attempting to keep his influence on the throne. His only hope was Jane's coronation. He proposed a marriage between her and his son Lord Guilford Dudley. The girl's ambitious parents wanted to fulfill the ambitions of England's most powerful man. Only Jane was unhappy. The wedding on May 25, 1553 was markedly political. The parents of the couple agreed that the union could not be materialized to nullify Dudley's plot. The newly married woman returned to her parents' home. Jane resumed her studies, but she would receive the tragic news that she would be queen two months after. Three days after Edward VI's passing, Dudley sent his daughter to bring Lady Jane Grey to his mansion. According to Jane's accounts, she was led to a large chamber full of noblemen with a throne on an altar. Dudley solemnly declared the death of Edward VI, then proceeded to report that Lady Jane Grey was the queen. Everyone knelt in honor as she fainted in shock. Jane refused to accept that new role, saying that Mary was the true heir, but her resistance was futile. The next day, Queen Jane took part in the royal procession to the Tower of London, where the monarchs traditionally awaited the coronation. In the streets, few went out to greet the new queen. During the evening, a major feast was served in honor of Jane, but the celebrations were overshadowed by the news of Mary gathering allies. 
At the end of the night, Jane fought with her husband as he demanded to be crowned too. The queen's short life was limited to signing documents and remaining concealed in her chambers. She feared she would be poisoned by Dudley. With only two days of rain, things started to crumble for Dudley. Mary assembled an army of 15,000 men and support for her cause grew quickly. In the eyes of many Englishmen, Protestants and Catholics, Mary was the legitimate heir to the English throne. She also enjoyed great support. Many Englishmen had fond memories of Mary's mother, Catherine of Aragon, and thought that Mary had been mistreated by many. Dudley was reluctant to leave London. He questioned the allegiance of some of his supporters and feared they would change sides once he turned his back. But he knew he was the only one who could achieve a counterattack. News of people declaring their loyalty to Mary kept coming from all parts of the country. On July 14th, Dudley left London, leading an army of about 5,000 men, announcing that he would bring Mary back, arrested or dead. As soon as he left the tower, many advisors fled quietly. Simultaneously, leaflets supporting Mary's right to the throne began to appear in the streets of London. By the next day, people were already openly declaring loyalty to her. In the tower, Queen Jane was told dreadful news about Dudley. His troops deserted and he was about to be defeated. On the 18th of July, only three members of the council supported Dudley. On the 19th of July, the Lord Mayor proclaimed Mary as the Queen of England, and London went crazy. It was like a football match. All the citizens opened massive and many fires all over the streets, with all the bells ringing. Jane's short and unfortunate reign came to an end. Jane stayed in her tower's quarters during all that time. After Mary's victory, the young woman's father warned that she was no longer queen. Quietly, Jane asked, May I go home then? Her father did not reply, but he had decided to abandon his daughter and support Mary. A few hours passed and guards arrived in the tower to inform that Jane, her husband, and her mother were to be made prisoners. The next day, Dudley was arrested. Four days later, he was locked up in the tower with his children. Jane waited for what would become of her. Mary informed the young woman's mother that nothing would happen to the girl. Mary announced the court's intention to keep Jane and her husband in custody until it was safe to forgive and release them. On August 23rd, Dudley was tried, found guilty, and executed. In November, Jane and her husband were tried for high treason. They were found guilty and sentenced to death, but Mary decided to be merciful and the prisoners remained in the tower. The intention was to delay Jane's pardon and release her only when the queen had married and given birth to an heir. But Mary's plans for marriage to Prince Philip of Spain were negatively seen by many who hated the idea that the country should be ruled by a foreign Catholic monarch. In such an unwelcoming environment, Jane could turn into a source of uprising and Mary increased security in the tower. Then, in January, her spies discovered a rebellion against the Queen. Led by an important Protestant nobleman, Sir Thomas Wyatt, alongside Jane's father. Mary's council pressed her and the reluctant Queen agreed. On the night of February 7th, Lady Jane was warned to prepare for her death. The execution would be two days away, but Mary offered a postponement if she converted to Catholicism. Jane refused. So, at 10 a.m. on the morning of February the 12th, 1554, Lady Jane walked a short distance to the Green Tower, soberly dressed in black and reading her prayer book. She lay her head down quietly, allowing the executioner to do his job. Her nine-day reign was not only brief, but dramatic and remarkable in the history of the Tudors. An unlucky girl lost her life in a plot of power and ambition in this war for the English throne.